Hola, buenas noches. Good evening, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, La Planning Diva. And today I want to share with you my January habit tracker setup. I just set this up and I want to share it with you how my habit tracker for the month of December went. So this is this sheet right here. I set this up on a camera with you all last month and I really like how I used this habit tracker. And so I was really excited to set up my habit tracker for this month, the month of January. I already set it up here. But yeah, I just thought it would be fun to review how December went in terms of habits and what I'm deciding to track in the month of January and how I'm gonna use the lessons I learned from habit tracking in December, how I'm gonna apply those lessons to habit tracking this month, the month of January. So if that sounds interesting to you, at all, then just keep on watching. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Okay, first off, these habit tracking sheets are from the Happy Planner. These are very old school Happy Planner. I think these have been around for quite a while, but they definitely give me old school Happy Planner vibes. They're very bright, very colorful. They're in that color palette that the Happy Planner loved to work in back in their earlier days. And I just love these habit tracker sheets so much. What I love about these is that it's habit tracking across an entire month instead of just a week, which is, I feel, the length of time that Happy Planner usually puts out their habit tracking stickers. It's usually just a week. They don't really give us a lot of a month habit tracking stickers. They do, but not a lot. And so I find it almost easier to just use these habit tracking sheets instead of stickers because these allow you to track three habits for an entire month. They give you three sections for habits and then 31 days per section. So first, let's review how December went before I jump into January. So I set this up again, like I said, on camera with you all. And the three habits that I decided to track in the month of December were waking up early, so waking up any time between 6 and 6.30 in the morning. And spoiler alert, I accomplished this 20 out of the 31 days in December, giving me a rate of 64%. The second habit I wanted to keep track of was walking my pugs. I have two pugs and I wanted to really instill in myself the habit of walking them at least 30 minutes every single day. And I'm happy to say that I accomplished this 28 out of the 31 days, which I believe was a rate of 90%, a 90% success rate. I'm very happy with that. And I think the only days I didn't walk them were days that it was actually raining, so I just didn't walk them. And in case you're curious, I do live in a house and I do have a big backyard and I have a pet door leading into the backyard. And so they do have access to be outside and to walk around outside whenever they want. The last habit I tracked in December was meditating for at least two minutes. And I am sorry to say that I only meditated 9 out of 31 days in December, which is a 29% success rate. So before I dive deep into what made some of these habits successful and what didn't, I just quickly want to share what I did on the back here. What I like about these half sheets is that on the back it gives you three sections, um, dot grid sections to journal or, or just to write notes about the three habits you're tracking. So for this sheet, what I ended up doing was just writing the why behind why I want to establish these habits. I felt that would motivate me to maintain those habits. So I gave myself a prompt for each of the habits. I asked myself, why do I want to wake up early? And I answered here to not feel rushed, to sync up with my circadian rhythm, to increase focus. For the second habit, I asked, why do I want to walk the dogs at least 30 minutes a day? And I wrote here to take care of my babies, to increase my movement, and to give them their potty breaks. And I have this super cute pug sticker going into the toilet. And lastly, the why behind wanting to meditate at least two minutes every day. Mental health was a big part of that. And of course, I wanted to increase focus and improve my mood. 
I felt journaling about the why behind why I want to maintain these habits, build and maintain these habits would help really instill in me the motivation to accomplish these habits. And then on the bottom half of the half sheet here, it just gives you a little box full of grid paper and it says note to self. And I used this little section to set up a kind of like a prize box for my habits. I gave myself a goal that I wanted to meet. So in terms of waking up early, my goal was to accomplish this 80% of the time. And then I gave myself a prize. Like if I met that goal, I would give myself this prize. And so for this goal, if I accomplished, you know, waking up early 80% of the time, I would give myself a happy planner sticker book. Of course, I didn't meet that goal. I only did 64% of the time. For walking the dogs, my goal was 95% of the time, but I only managed to achieve this 90% of the time and my prize was a workout outfit. And then lastly, for meditation, my goal was 80% of the time and you saw that I only accomplished 29% success rate and the prize here was two new essential oils. I really liked this. I felt it was motivating and I'm going to incorporate it in my new habit tracker. So, okay, so let's dive into the habits and what worked for me and what didn't. So my first habit, waking up early from 6 to 6.30, um, I'm actually going to carry this habit over into January because I feel like I still haven't mastered this habit. It's still not cemented within me. It still hasn't become just a vital part of my routine. So I'm going to continue to work on this habit and build it. I am going to tighten up this habit a little bit as well. So for December, I gave myself kind of a window of any time between 6 and 6.30. If I got up any time in between that window, that 30 minute window, I could check off that I had accomplished this habit. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the times I got up at 6.30 in the morning, more so than I got up at 6 in the morning. And so for January, I kind of want to tighten that up a little bit. I want to really solidify a 6 in the morning wake up for me. Oh, and I do want to mention that I am filming this on the 13th. And so I'm just going to like X out all the days that came before. I really meant to film this video earlier in the month. And I really wanted to keep track of my habits from the very beginning, from the first. But, you know, life happens and we aren't and we don't always get to start when we want to start. But it's better late than ever. So here I am just launching into it on the 13th. So my goal is to wake up at six in the morning every day. And on the back, instead of writing the why behind why I want to wake up at six in the morning, I decided to give myself a couple of notes about how I want to succeed at achieving this goal. And so I wrote down bedtime at 9 p.m. I want to be in bed by 8.30 p.m. No screens by 8 p.m. And I want to stretch before bed. I find stretching before bed really relaxes me. It really loosens up my muscles. And whenever I do like bedtime yoga, which is like anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, very easy bedtime yoga routine, I, I fall asleep so quickly and I sleep so soundly. So I really want to incorporate stretching before bed into my bedtime routine. I want to get to bed early. I want to improve my sleep hygiene, reduce lights, eliminate screens by 8 p.m. I want to be in bed by 8.30 and I like to read in bed a little bit like a physical book. And I always find that also kind of helps me to unwind and soothes me. So I have all of these mechanisms in place to help me go to sleep early, go to sleep well, and hopefully that's going to help me wake up early. Okay, so for the second habit in January, walking the pugs, I'm actually not going to be tracking this habit in January because I feel like it's pretty solidified into my lifestyle at this point. I really don't need to continue to keep track of this. Plus, I'm kind of keeping track of this anyway in my fitness planner because I do keep track of walks in my fitness planner. I don't think I need to work on this. I think I pretty much achieved 
this goal. I mean, my goal was to accomplish this 95% of the time, but I only did 90%. I mean, that's still pretty solid. And honestly, the only reason I didn't accomplish 95% of the time was because it was raining. However, I didn't meet this goal, so I'm not going to give myself the prize of the workout outfit. But that's fine, because I actually don't really need um, workout outfits right now. I think I have a pretty good workout outfit wardrobe, and I really don't need any more clothes. Okay, the last habit here, meditating at least two minutes. As you can see, I didn't meditate too much in December. I only meditated 9 out of 31 days. However, I'm still counting this as a win because honestly, I've meditated more in the month of December than I meditated in like the two months preceding December. And honestly, some people don't even meditate once or twice a year, and I managed to meditate like nine times this month, so I am counting it as a win, but I definitely can see that I have a lot of room to improve and to grow. I think meditation is so important for mental health, for focus, for discipline, to help concentration, to help mood. It's just such a healthy thing for your mind. Particularly, I think that it is important for me because I am an academic, I am a scientist, I'm a computer coder, and I feel like a lot of the times, a lot of my day-to-day -day activities are problem-solving, abstract puzzles and problems. My brain's processors are often just like running hot all day, and I think I really need mental massages to help me remain sane. And that's pretty much what I wrote down here in my reason behind why I want to meditate at least two minutes every day. Mental health, increased focus, and improve mood. And um, my goal was to meditate 80% of the time. I only did 29%, so I'm not going to get my prize of two new essential oils. So I am going to carry this habit over into January because it's definitely something that I still need to work on and build on and figure out how to build and maintain meditation as a habit. After quite a bit of reflection, I decided that the main reason that I wasn't able to meditate as frequently as I wanted to was because I just did not have a dedicated time and space to meditate. The way I was approaching meditation in December was just kind of like, oh, if I have some free time, some downtime, I will, if I remember, I, I will meditate. But the thing with me is that I'm very busy and I often do not have free time or downtime. And so I just don't have that space in my day where I think, oh, I have, you know, some extra time I'm going to meditate. It's very clear that I'm going to need a little bit more structure in order to incorporate meditation into my routine. I'm going to have to carve out the time and the space for meditation. Last year, I read this book called Atomic Habits. It's a pretty good book. It's all about building habits and how to successfully incorporate new habits into your routine. And one of the techniques they talk about in that book is this technique called habit stacking, where you kind of piggyback a new habit onto an existing habit that you already have in order to carve out time and space for that new habit. So for example, let's say you're trying to build a new habit, meditation for two minutes. You want to couple that habit with a pre-existing habit that's already in your routine. So for example, let's say you make coffee in the morning when you get up every morning and then you drink your coffee at the kitchen table. So in habit stacking, if you want to successfully integrate this new habit meditation, you want to couple it with that pre-existing coffee habit. So let's say from now on, every time you drink coffee at the kitchen table in the morning, you're going to meditate for two minutes before or after the coffee. So that's what I'm going to do. I decided that at seven o'clock in the morning, um, I'm going to do my morning coffee and meditation ritual, coffee or tea, because I do drink coffee and tea. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I decided that I'm going to carry out my meditation routine alongside my morning coffee or tea routine. At seven o'clock in the morning, I'm going to make my coffee or my tea, go out into the backyard, um, sit down in my patio furniture. I have a nice big sofa out there and just drink my coffee or my tea out there in the backyard surrounded by my succulents and my cactus in the morning air. When it's quiet, it's calm, it's fresh. 
and I just want to take a little moment of calm before the busy day. And I'm hoping to, at clockwork, at 7 in the morning, I just want to sit out there for two minutes at the very least and just meditate and drink my coffee or my tea. And that's going to be my morning coffee meditation routine. I'm hoping that by ritualizing it, by carving out time and space, and by coupling it to a habit that I already have, which is drinking my coffee in the morning, that I'm really going to cement this meditation routine, this meditation habit into my routine. And this was kind of inspired by um, one of the days in December, I forget what day it was, but it was in the morning and I went out into my backyard with my coffee and I just sat out there for a few minutes and it was so quiet and pleasant and calm and I just felt so good just sitting out there in the morning just looking out at the beautiful day and I could see my garden and my backyard all green and all my plants were around me and it just felt very peaceful and I thought this is such a beautiful space to meditate. It would be amazing if I could kind of reorganize my patio space, make it even more peaceful than it is, maybe put out a meditation cushion and just make this my meditation space. And that kind of inspired me to think about making it my meditation space and then making it a ritual to meditate. So I'm really excited about um, this new routine. And then the last um, habit that I'm going to be tracking in January, this is a new habit and it's going to be flossing with my water pick. I haven't been flossing as much as I have been wanting to for the last couple of months. There was a time in my life where I was so good about flossing and I just fell away from that and I really want to get back into it because it's, you know, good dental hygiene. I also just got a water pick like two, three months ago. Um, I, the only reason I got it was because I got my mom a water pick and it, and it came in like a set of two water picks and so I got the smaller water pick and I just haven't really gotten into the mood to bust it out and I really have no excuse. So I really want to recommit to my dental hygiene so the last habit I'm going to be tracking in January is flossing with my water pick. And so for my little like flossing routine that I set up here on the back, I decided that as part of my nighttime routine, I'm going to have a dentist appointment at 8.20 p.m. at night, um, so 10 minutes before I get into bed, and I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to give myself, you know, an ample amount of time, 10 minutes to brush my teeth and to floss with the water pick and also like take out my contacts and do anything I need to do to get ready for bed. And I also just wrote a little bit here about what is motivating me to do this. Um, healthy teeth prevent cavities, prevent bad breath, and avoid dental bills. And the last thing I set up here on my habit tracking sheet was my habit stats and prizes box. I'm using it very similarly to how I used it in December, but I did something a little bit differently with the goals. I gave myself two goals. I gave myself like a standard goal and then I gave myself a stretch goal. This is something I learned from reading um, A Year of Less by I think her name is Caitlin Flanders. I'm not sure exactly what the author's name is, but basically she was talking a little bit about goals and stretch goals and how you have your standard goals and then you have like your dream goals. So my standard goal for my habits are 70% for waking up early, 50% for meditating, and 50% for flossing with the water pick. My stretch goals are 80%, 60%, and 60%. And for the prizes, I have different prizes for each goal and for the standard versus the stretch goals. So for the standard goals, I have bath bomb, nail polish, and a lush soap. And then for the stretch goals, I have an essential oil, a meditation book, and a lipstick. So those are the prizes that are going to be motivating me to accomplish my goals. I have a couple of notes about how I can achieve my goals and motivation behind my goals. And so those are my goals and my habits that I'm trying to really solidify in January. I'm excited to see how this month goes, but let me know if you're tracking any goals um, this month and if so, what you're using to track them. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in my next video. So until then, just stay safe, stay blessed, and happy planning. Bye!